The name of the project is the Integrated Ecosystem Condition Assessment, which we abbreviate to call IECA. The project is designed to develop a new way of assessing the condition of rivers and wetlands and floodplains to inform management. So managers need to understand what condition a wetland is in so that they can manage it properly and, and intervene where they need to to restore or protect that wetland from possible stresses or threats and to maintain its, its values. Permanent wetlands are really important um, refuges for many aquatic biota and any changes to their um, frequency of drying um, may compromise their ability to function as refuges. In addition, hydrological connectivity is really important in river floodplain systems because it allows for the exchange of nutrients and organic matter and animals between river and floodplain habitats. There's a broad scale push to restore wetlands and rivers and floodplains in the Murray-Darling Basin um, and across all of Australia because it's recognised that they are of incredible natural value. They support enormous biodiversity in terms of lots of different birds, lots of different fish, all rely on wetlands. But wetlands are also important from um, an ecosystem services point of view, that is that we as a society gain a number of benefits from wetlands and rivers. While we all use them for, as a source of fresh water, they're often places that people like to go and um, spend time, whether it's doing active recreation like uh, water skiing or passive recreation like just bushwalking or picnicking. So the recognition of the value of wetlands and rivers um, has been acknowledged and it's also been acknowledged that uh, due to a number of unforeseen consequences they're now in a degraded state and the government and people in general want to stop that degradation and restore those wetlands to ensure that those values are protected into the future. And if managers are going to do that effectively, then they need to have a way of assessing the condition of those wetlands and working out the extent to which they meet society's expectations. My role on the IECA project was to trial some condition assessment methods for assessing the condition of river and wetland ecosystems. In particular, they were to trial some uh, methods for assessing some key hydrological processes. Those hydrological processes were wetland permanence and hydrological connectivity with the river. The methods uh, used was to collect data sets from uh, your species richness of your fish, your birds and your aquatic plants from two test sites of Barma Millawa Forest and Hatter Lakes. Um, and collecting this data we was then able to come up with species refraction curves which allows you to be able to make comparisons between the species richness between the different uh, taxa that we looked at. And then we compared the communities for vegetation, fish and birds uh, to what, what the communities were like in 2012 after we'd had a couple of major floods go through. What we've done is we've come up with a series of steps that managers need to go through as they design the monitoring program that they put in place. And the first one is obviously to identify the system that you're trying to um, manage. Then you need to go and say, well, why do we want to manage this system? What do we want to achieve in terms of the values? Are we trying to protect some endangered species? Are we trying to protect it because people like to go there and have picnics or water ski on it or whatever it happens to be? What are the things that people value about this system? And once you've got that sort of sorted out, then you can sort of say, all right, what indicators, what do we measure that will give us some indication of how close the system is to what we want it to be? You know, is the species of frog there? Are people able to water ski safely? You know, whatever it happens to be, you need to choose some indicators that'll give you the right numbers to enable you to assess it. Once you've done that, you also need to identify what stresses might affect the system. So are there some pests that are going to come in have we altered the hydrology of the system so that the water regime is different from what it would be normally? Have we put barriers up that we might stop fish moving in and out? You need to identify those and then work out what sort of risk the wetland faces in terms of our management so that the managers can come in and actually help either reduce that stress or prevent it getting worse. To estimate reference conditions for uh, wetland permanence, we use data that modelled the conditions with no river regulation effects or dam effects and then we compared the frequency of wetlands drying under actual conditions to get an idea of how much river regulation has affected wetland permanence. So if we take a look at this wetland and the condition assessment of this wetland, if you can actually see there is uh, 
quite a diversity of different plant species here. We've got some amphibious and submerged ones as well as some emergent around the wetland. Um, you can also notice that there is some of them are flowering which indicates that there will be seeds replenishing back into the seed bank. Overall this wetland on an ecological condition we would say was pretty good. And so if we take a look at this wetland and compare it to the, the other one that we've seen, it hasn't got as much diversity in your aquatic plants or even your emergent ones around the edge. The water quality doesn't look uh, as good, there's a bit of algae glooms, um, maybe a bit of erosion around the edge. So overall ecological condition of this wetland, I wouldn't have said it was as good as the, the previous one we have looked at. Not always what we expected, sometimes uh, the condition of our community was, was less than what we expected uh, compared to 2008 uh, and sometimes it, it was um, uh, improved. So there's all sorts of difficult sort of management decisions and then there's a whole bunch of difficult science decisions that need to be wrapped up into the, into the um, assessment. I think we've made a lot of progress in terms of developing a clear process by which people can gather information together and then make critical decisions about the way they assess wetlands in a way that will give them a much more powerful and informative assessment of condition. There are still lots of challenges in front of us and we'll hopefully get some funding to, to work through those, but um, I think we've now yeah, established a framework where even if someone doesn't adopt the whole framework, they can go in and pick out bits of it and say, that's a useful process for us to apply as we develop our assessment of this, of this system. And you know, the more it gets picked up, the, you know, the, the better it'll be.